What's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you how to set up a real US bank account and a real US credit card without being a US citizen. So being a non-resident, not having a social security number and without flying here to the US and you know making this cost a ton of money. This way you can start, you know, and hook up your bank account to a PayPal account or a Stripe account or an Amazon FBA account or a Shopify account and you can do real business in the US. Unfortunately, you know how hard this is if you're not a US citizen to get a US bank account, to get a credit card. So I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step complete tutorial of all the options that are best for you. That way you can pick what situation is best for you and to make sure that we're saving the most amount of money, making it easy as possible, everything like that. Just real quick before we get started, guys, for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Cameron James. I've been selling Amazon for almost five years now. My entire life essentially has been online, making money online, whether it's e-commerce, digital marketing, affiliate stuff, everything like that. So if you want to stay up to date, learn more about me, learn more about how I make money online, make sure you subscribe down below otherwise guys let's get into my screen i'm going to show you exactly how to do this all right guys hop into my screen here we can see i made this nice little pdf for us uh, to make it as simple as possible just walking through step by step going through all the scenarios uh, how to open a u.s bank account and a credit card as a foreigner without a social security number and without going to the u.s so this has all the information all the resources we uh, need uh, at the end of this video i'll show you exactly how you can get a copy of this and how to use this for yourself so the biggest thing for me uh, was there's different scenarios there's different options and we don't want to go straight to the hardest option this straight to the one that's going to cost us the most money, uh, the most time. We need to figure out what you're using this for, uh, what options are best for us, because there are some different solutions that are not just a U.S. bank account. But by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to set up a U.S. bank account, a real one, a legit one, without coming to the USA uh, and everything like that, as well as all the best options for U.S. credit cards as a non-resident. Just stay patient with me. Uh, we got to do our due diligence, and we need to learn more about this to make sure that we are doing it correctly and not getting ourselves in trouble here. So the first step. So what to do if you have a foreign business already incorporated or just want to transfer personal funds, have a personal U.S. bank account. So, okay, so what I'm talking about here is a non-business bank account or maybe you already have a, a foreign business that you're using for your Shopify or Amazon or PayPal, whatever it may be. And you just want to have a place where you can get U.S. funds, transfer that back to you in your home currency. So this is how you do that. Or maybe just a personal U.S. bank account that you can have U.S. dollars. You can transfer that around and uh, make sure that you can get paid when you're doing business online in the U.S. So there's two options for this that I love and that a lot of people that I mentor, everything like that use. And the first one is wise.com. So we go to wise.com. I see I already actually had it up here. And this is, it used to be called TransferWise, but now is known as wise. Same thing here. But what this is, is essentially like a, think of it as a PayPal for uh, international currencies. So you can hook this up to an Amazon store. Uh, you can hook this up most likely to a Shopify store. I have not done that personally, just to Amazon. Uh, but you can use this to get money paid out to you in us dollars and then you could go down and switch it into other currencies okay so you can do a multi-currency account which is right here and then you could go over here and you can uh, you can see the fees here so send 500 usd to euros it's five dollars versus the big banks 20 27 dollars everything like that so that is one option and then the next option is pay a near uh, so each Wise and Payoneer, they both have certain countries they don't do business in. I'm sure there's, you know, banking regulations. It's very complex, unfortunately. Uh, I've got to talk to a lot of these people, and I know that their job is very hard uh, to keep this going. So Payoneer is another solution where you can hook it up, get U.S., you know, USD or whatever, you know, currency you're trying to get, and then send that back uh, to you, transfer that without, you know, crazy high fees back to your home currency, hook that up to your personal bank account, whether that's, um, you know, in your home country or your business bank account that's incorporated there uh, and everything like that. So those are two great options there. Again, technically not a real US bank account. So let's go over these uh, small details you need to know as we work through this. So why WISE is the best option? So out of these two, if we're gonna pick one of these two, uh, WISE is the better option to me, uh, if available in your country, as you can see, if you go over here, you can see all the countries available. Same thing with Payoneer, if you go to their uh, facts. Also, they have a lot of information uh, about, you know, all the countries they support, everything like that. But let's go over what I thought was important here to break down. Uh, so it's easy to sign up, just passport, 
plus proof of address in most cases to get signed up country to country there. Uh, you don't need a social security number to open this and to take in US dollars uh, from say Amazon, just as an example there. Has cheaper rates than big banks as we saw. It was $5 to transfer money from euros to USD versus $20 or $40 from the big banks. So real banks are charging a lot more to convert currencies. Uh, you can have accounts for major currencies such as USD, uh, euros, uh, pounds, uh, Australian dollars, you know, Canadian dollars, all those uh, countries that we talked about and showed you right here. We can see there's there's tons of options uh, of currencies we can hold in there. You can transfer this money from USD to, to pounds to euros easily. So you'll have multiple accounts. Uh, so say you're taking in US dollars and you want to get back to euros, Australian dollars, you can easily transfer those out with low fees, get that into your Australian dollars account, then put that back into your local currency, um, you know, your bank account or your business bank account, whatever that is that you have in Australia, that would work in any country uh, specific that you're trying to do this in. And obviously you won't need to go to the USA to do this. Uh, so, you know, a great solution, saves you a lot of money with that flight, everything like that. Uh, so going down to kind of the cons about this, it doesn't have the features of all the big banks. Okay. So hooking up a, a credit card to, um, you know, something like this doesn't really work. The credit card companies want you to have a bigger bank. Uh, if you do expand your business and get bigger, it doesn't have all the features you'd like. Uh, next credit card companies won't let you use it. There you go, just like I talked about. Uh, if you're looking for a US credit card, you need a real US bank to link that to. Uh, some countries uh, restrictions. So like I said, every uh, Payoneer and Wise have some pretty big country restrictions. Uh, so you need to go through to see if this one will be right for you, if it works for your country. As you can see, there's a lot of countries you can use, but obviously there's a lot more uh, in the world than just those. Uh, next, to get a real US bank account and US credit card in this scenario, you will have to go to the US, don't need a social security number to open a business bank account in US. So what I mean by that is to get a real U.S. bank account and a U.S. credit card in this scenario, you literally have to travel to the U.S. So, you know, if you get a Wise or Payoneer um, account, you still have to go uh, into the U.S. You have to go into a branch uh, like a Bank of America or a Chase or whatever bank you choose and walk in, which you can do. You don't need a social security number to open a business bank account in the U.S., but you physically have to be there. That's the issue. Same thing with credit card in that scenario. Okay, so what do we do if we need a legit U.S. bank account? We want everything uh, to line up perfectly, but we don't want to travel to the U.S. Okay, so what to do if you want a real U.S. bank account without actually going there? Uh, this is the recommended solution uh, that acts like a real U.S. bank, everything like that. And that solution is called Mercury. Okay, so if I click on this bad boy uh, and go over here, we can see banking stack for startups, uh, everything like that. So there are some stipulations in here that you need to know before signing up to a Mercury account, which we'll go through. But this is the solution. If, if you want a real U.S. bank account without going there and you don't have a social security number, you're not a citizen, a non-resident, this is the solution, okay? So why Mercury is different? Let's go over these reasons and I'll tell you how to set it up and everything like that. So it acts like a real U.S. bank account and it's all done online, which is what we're looking for because we don't want to travel to the USA. We can integrate other payment pl platforms to it, such as PayPal, Stripe, Shopify, Square, Amazon. As we can see here in the help section, we can see what external payment processors they use. Uh, obviously, they have a lot of great information here, but I'm just going to show you what I think is important, okay? Next, it accepts most countries, okay? It's FDIC insured and it's free accounts. So if we go to Mercury here, and I suggest you doing the same thing. So we go to about, go down to FAQs, and we can learn more about Mercury to see if this is the best solution for you. So going over the most important things here, are my deposits FDIC insured? So the biggest thing about US banks is it's FDIC insured. So our federal government insures these bank accounts if they lose your money or something crazy happens, stock market crashes, you have protection to get your money back. That's huge, right? That's what a US bank account, uh, you know, a legit one, that's what you want to see. So you're protected there, which is fantastic. Okay, so what does Mercury cost? They don't charge any fees. The only fees they have are about, you know, doing wires, everything like that, which is like any traditional bank. And if I remember correctly, uh, on their pricing page here, uh, their wires are a lot cheaper uh, than other traditional banks because they're all online. So that's fantastic as well. Uh, we go down here. So can I apply for an account if I'm not physically in the United States or US resident? 
Yes, we're proud to support U.S. incorporated companies founded by people across the globe. I see what they said here, incorporated companies. That's something important we're going to talk about here in a second and why that's so important. Uh, right from your laptop without needing to visit the U.S. There are a few exceptions. We can't currently open accounts for founders living in following countries. Uh, so we got Belarus, Burundi, uh, Central Af African Republic, Cuba, so on, so on. So make sure that you're not on this list. Uh, I will say this list is very, very small compared to how many countries there actually are in the world. So that makes it one of the best solutions out there for sure. Okay, so let's go back to my PDF here. Uh, as we can see, we covered most of all that. So make sure you go through the FAQ section when you get to Mercury. Uh, so how do we set this up? So we can see, they say, we're proud to support US incorporated companies. So what they mean by that is you need to have a US business before you set up a Mercury account, okay? It cannot be your personal account. It cannot be uh, you know, uh, a business outside the US. You want to have a US incorporated company, okay? The easiest way to do that, which I'm gonna show you, which I do all the time, I've done this five to six different times, is we just get a registered agent and we get a business here in the US, which you don't need a social security number for. Uh, it's very easy to do. We literally have two options here that I recommend. Uh, one is getting our business set up in Wyoming. So in the US, we have 50 states. Every single state has different business laws, which again, don't think about it this way because it, it's too complicated, but just know that Wyoming and Delaware have the best business laws uh, in my personal opinion, and this is where I get my LLCs done. So we can literally go online only and go here and form an LLC or corporation. I suggest getting an LLC. Uh, these are the cheapest things. You don't need a corporation uh, right away to start with an LLC. This is like the normal standard business option for uh, US citizens for the US and something you can get set up. So we go to business entity, LLC. We put in our company name here. So for this one, I'll just put Cameron James LLC is the name here. Uh, we go down to manager man managed, member managed. Uh, so mine will be member managed here. So if you got a manager, uh, that's where that goes in. Again, just Google this if you're confused, but member managed is what's gonna be for most people. You put your name here, okay? If you got other owners, this is where you'll put that. So add owners. I'm just going over the, the most important facts here. That way you guys know how to set it up. Uh, we go to optional items here. So annual compliance nominee service. So this means they'll just keep it alive every year. You want to do this. Uh, we can do Wyoming phone number. Uh, we can do uh, to have a unique business address in Wyoming. I'm going to select these two because these are very important. And I'll show you why here in a second uh, of why we need this. Uh, so what this is, is again, it's hundred dollars a year, unfortunately, but what they do is they open and scan mail. So having a physical address in the US is great. Also having a phone number uh, is great. Again, go over this, there's different options, but uh, it might be just easier to do a one-stop shop here. And then you put in your information here, and then you put in your payment information here. And then by the end of the day, or in a couple of days, you'll have an LLC incorporated, okay? Uh, so it's that easier. The other option is uh, Delaware. Uh, so this one, same thing. So start a company, uh, you can go through that. The cool thing about this one is it allows you to get a utility bill if you need. So on Amazon FBA, sometimes for uh, verification for your business, you need a utility bill. So this is a great option for that if you need that. Again, I give deeper videos on this on my channel, going over utility bills, going over these options. So don't freak out there. Just go search on my channel, how to start a US LLC, how to get a utility bill if you're going that route. Uh, next, get a US physical address to send mail to. So like I showed you, we can do this with Wyoming, registered agent or the Delaware one, they have that option. So that's why I clicked over here to get the mail forwarding right here, get a unique Wyoming business address. That way we take care of that in one place. Uh, you can also just Google, get a US physical address. There's hundreds, hundreds of services for this. Uh, next, get a US phone number. This is required for the Mercury application. Uh, so you can do this with the LLC services, just like I showed you right here, Wyoming phone number, or you can just Google this. There's so many options. You have so many options. If you just Google, get a US phone number, everything like that. Okay, so the, once we're done here, so we literally can get all these three steps done on one single page for under you know a couple hundred bucks uh, a year there, which again, that's just, that's cheap when it comes to getting your LLC set up. You know, if you do it like with a lawyer here, it's going to cost thousands. Okay. So next get your EIN. So once you have uh, your US LLC, you'll need your EIN. So what this is, is essentially just an identifier number or 
you can compare it with a social security number, but for your business. Everybody needs this to make sure that the US government knows who your business is, they know who you are, everything like that. This is how they kind of keep track of everything. Uh, so we need this for our Mercury application. You need this for pretty much everything you do with your US business anyways. So it's best just to get it. You can just uh, go to the government site here. Uh, this is not clickable, I'll fix that, but literally you can Google this. Click here and get uh, get US EIN number. Okay, I didn't even spell it right, but still doesn't matter. Apply for employer uh, identification number here, EIN online. So this is irs.gov. Uh, so the one thing here, they do have hours operations when you can apply, but you can go down here, apply online now. As a US resident, uh, this is a really quick and easy process. As a non US resident, uh, you have to go through a few more steps here. So clicking this guy right here, we go to an article. If you're not a US citizen, can you get an EIN for your business? Uh, we go down here, this explains it in a lot greater detail. You can get your EIN faster if you have an ITIN, which you can apply for, uh, which they talk about right here. Uh, you can get it without the ITIN, so going down all the way down here, applying for EIN without an SSN or ITIN. Uh, so this is literally walking through step by step here of how this all works. Uh, so you do have to, the, the biggest difference between a US citizen and non US citizen doing this is the best way is just to get on the phone with them, which again is annoying, I know, or you have to do this through fax or mail, but obviously the easiest one would be phone, uh, getting that figured out. It does take a little longer as an international uh, resident to get an EIN in America right now. Uh, this has been slow during the, you know, the whole pandemic thing here, uh, but who knows, maybe it speeds up by the time you're doing this, but start this as soon as possible, just because if it does take a little longer, you wanna make sure that uh, you get that in in a timely manner so that you know time's working on your half there. So next guys, sign up with Mercury with that info. So since we did all these four steps here, we now have all the information we need to sign up for a Mercury account. So the whole reason I want you through this is because I wanted you to be set up to be successful when it comes to applying for Mercury, okay? So there's important things we need to talk about before we sign up for a Mercury account, okay? Uh, eventually we'll get to US credit cards here if you've been waiting for that, so I, I appreciate. But again, this is an important process of that as well, uh, making sure we have a real US bank account so we can get a real US credit card. It really helps out with that process. So uh, these are just the steps we have to go through. Okay, so some important notes before we sign up for Mercury is that they have to be strict with background checks to avoid criminal accounts. So they are pretty strict on this. So that's why we got all this information to make sure that we were setting ourselves up for success here. Okay, next, make sure you fill out the application thoroughly. Okay, so if we go back uh, to the Mercury account here uh, and we go to open an account, that's gonna take us to an application uh, to get that signed up and to see if we can get one filled out for ourselves. Uh, next, application walkthrough so you don't miss any steps. So there are quite a few steps here to make sure that we're thorough. I've created a video of this in the past. If I go here, hit pause here, we can see I've linked this at the perfect timing of when I fill out this application for you. So make sure you go check that out and uh, that'll walk you through that whole process. If you want this whole LLC and Mercury process, uh, this is the video for that. So starting from the beginning, um, in that way you don't miss a single step when it comes to that. And it literally walks you through these steps, these steps, these steps, these steps, and then uh, the, the Mercury application. So that's a more thorough version of it. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the, that uh, to make sure that everything was easy, making sure you don't miss any steps. Again, they are very picky on who they take in. So it's really good to make sure that you do all the steps uh, properly. So make sure you check out those videos and walk through. Uh, if you've been waiting for this, thank you. Uh, but just if, if you really enjoyed this, let me know so far in the comments down below. Uh, this is a big deal, guys. Like sign up for a US bank account uh, as a non-resident without flying here. This is a huge deal. So hopefully this was super helpful for you. Uh, hopefully you have tons of options as well with Wise and Payoneer. Uh, but I just wanted to give a solution out there that we didn't have to fly here, where you save tons of money, where you can do business in the US and do it properly and make sure you don't get yourself in any trouble there. Okay, so now on to how to get a US credit card. Okay, so I wanna talk about some obstacles we have to overcome to get a US credit card or why it's so hard for non-citizens to get a US credit card. One, no social security number. No US credit history. As you know, uh, I'm sure this works in your home country as well when you get a credit card, but they check your US credit history to make sure that you haven't gone bankrupt, that you don't have a ton of loans already, and to make sure that you are able to pay these, these bills back and pay back your credit. Three, no physical address to get sent to. Okay, so if you have a you know a credit card, you need to get it sent to you. They won't ship that internationally. 
So U.S. credit card companies usually don't send these things internationally. So uh, not having a physical address to get sent to uh, is a tough one as well. But technically, we've already taken care of that if you sign up for a Mercury account. Next, no U.S. bank to hook it up to. Again, Mercury account solves that issue. Uh, next, the best method is to explore all options, which we'll get into here in a second. Uh, so there are credit cards for every scenario here. So next, we go to no social security number. We see I put a, a quick solution here for you. So best credit cards without social security number requirements. So what are our options? Options here. Uh, so we see uh, there's tons of options, right? So, you know, shout out to Wallet Hub here for helping us out with this. But what are our best options if we don't have a social security number? So we can go through these. They're all a little different of what we, we can use, everything like that. Uh, so make sure you go through that thoroughly. Next, no US credit history. Okay, so what does that look like? So best credit cards for people with no credit. So if you don't have a social security number, you probably don't have any credit unless you had an I-10 or something like that. Okay, which if you had an I-10, you're sitting in a little better spot, but most people don't have that. So going down here, we see there's some options. We see this little secured credit card. So what this means is a lot of these options will be secured. And when you see this, all that means is that you're gonna put a little money down, uh, essentially in your bank account or in their bank account to make sure that you can always pay back your credit card. This is a great way just to kind of prove yourself like, hey, like give me a credit limit of 2000. And I'm gonna put 2000 in this account, again, just using a random number there. Uh, and uh, just in case I never pay it, uh, that 2000, you know, it's there for you guys to take in, but obviously you're gonna pay the bills because this is gonna help you build credit history. So once you get that credit card, make sure you're you're paying back your bills to make sure your US credit history uh, remains in good standing there, okay? Uh, so no physical address. So again, you can use the Wyoming LLC setup, or you can use Google uh, to, to do this, to, to find a US physical address. You can come here, uh, stay in Airbnb if you wanted to, I guess. But again, most people don't wanna stay here. Uh, next, you can also just create an online account, app account, and use that card number, expiration date, and your that three little digit code in the back there uh, to make purchases online. So technically, you know, if I'm making a purchase online, I don't need my physical credit card. What I just need is the numbers, all the information on it, so I can enter those on to the online payment processor and make that purchase or, or make that payment, everything like that. So technically you don't need it physically, you just need the numbers and everything on it. So if you have an online account, usually you can get that information with your credit card company, okay? Next, no US bank account to hook it up to. That's our Mercury account. Next, the best method to explore all options because it, it is always changing. As like the best credit cards uh, for your situation, in the US, we, we change credit cards so often because it's like a shiny new object and everything like that. It's just a good marketing tactic. So there's new options coming out there every year, every day, everything like that. So the best option for you is how to get a US credit card without social security number is just grabbing this guy, going over to Google, typing this in, and you can see there's tons of options for us. Uh, if we go down, skip the ad, so can you get a credit card without a social security number? This actually was a really good article uh, going down here. So card issues that will consider applications without a social security number. The two most popular card issues for applicants without a social security number are American Express and Citibank, okay? So you can see just like just by Googling, we found the two best options are American Express and Citibank, according to this article. If we go back, there's obviously tons of little articles. We see Nerd Wallet again. Uh, we see how to apply for credit card without a social security number. So go through this, do your research. Don't just hop on the first thing you see and figure out what's best for you. All right, guys, I hope that one was helpful. Walking through all the steps, all the options to get a U.S. bank account and a U.S. credit card without flying here. Uh, you know, it took me a lot of work to put this together. So uh, hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it gave you some solutions, gave you some ideas of how this thing works. Just like I said in the beginning of this video, if you stay to the end, I'll tell you exactly how to get this PDF if you want a copy of it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make sure you subscribe to my channel. We'll be checking, make sure you subscribe down below. Uh, also, leave me a comment down below that you want the PDF. So once you do that, we'll be able to send you the link uh, with that comment, and that way you can go ahead and get that PDF, okay? Uh, so guys, again, hopefully this was helpful. I'm gonna link some other videos on this channel to make sure that you know if you wanna go deeper on the subject, you can. Uh, otherwise, guys, if if you know someone that needs a U.S. credit card or U.S. bank account and doesn't want to fly here doing U.S. business, make sure you share this video with them. It's super helpful. I love helping all the other people. Uh, and most people don't know about these solutions. So you can seem you seem pretty smart, right, when you send this over to them uh, and show them like, hey, this is how you do it. Uh, so make sure you share this uh, and give it to someone that needs it. Otherwise, guys, I hope you like it and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.